Awesome! Hello, ladies! Hello, hello! I had uh, quite a few signed up, and I don't know if they're all on. Hopefully they're all on. Andy, I had an idea for a project. Oh, yeah? About painting on a candle on the actual wax. Yeah. Donna used to do that years ago. Yeah, I have done that, too. Um, yeah, definitely. Any surface. It's, it's cover is actually amazingly easy than I thought. Um, you have to prep the candle somehow, though, don't you? No, I just painted right on top of it. Okay. Yeah, and then again... Like, there was some kind of medium you had to put on it first. Not no. that I remember doing it's anything good. special to them. I just, like any surface, treat it more like glass painting, right? Like you'll try to stay away from too much medium. Yeah, okay. And uh, just use the multi-surface as is as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have any problem with it at all. Uh, I did it years ago, like 15 years ago, I guess it was, when um, I first started with one stroke. Yeah. At that time, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I think mine was from back about then, too, I was playing around with. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, welcome, welcome. When the candle burns, does it affect the paint? They say not to use the candle. It's only yeah, the candle. I haven't wanted to use it. Like, I had an old pillar that didn't really burn very good, and I ended up using tea lights in the top of it. I got it to burn a little bit, enough to make a hole, nice. and yeah. then I just kept putting tea lights in the top of it so I didn't have to worry about wrecking my design. Oh, so that's, that's I was, yeah, and then, or you can get those battery-operated ones at the dollar store that look like candles, yeah. and they are just plastic, so they're super easy to paint on, and then you don't have to worry yeah. about it, too. So, yeah, that's um, that's some great ideas there to talk about. I always like you guys to come up with some ideas, pick my brain, ask me questions while I'm here. I'd love to do some demos for you. Um, I had a, quite a few people that I thought, well, maybe it'll be a quiet night there with everybody busy with the holidays. But it seems that uh, there's quite a few that was uh, maybe, you know, done with your week of craziness and <laughs> needed a night just to sit and relax and paint a little bit and i actually spent the whole day today putting christmas away <laughs> i actually decorated my house really early this year so i was like done with it and i had the day off today and time to myself and i just thought okay i need to organize my desk for tonight and get rid of all this glitter oh my god my house is covered in glitter from head to toe i had the vacuum on forever and trying to get everything put away and so now i can organize and get ready for january's paint club project that we're gonna do i'll announce that when i get closer to um finalizing my idea and getting it on canvas and um so yeah thank you thank you you guys that have joined my club i'm glad you're liking it uh, definitely i added more videos to it all the time as i see some of the ones that i've done on youtube i add them in the club just because they're free on youtube but i add them in there for easy reminders for you guys because if you're having stroke work problems the i have the six or 12 ways of doing a shell stroke you know definitely we did that one time i don't know if it was a facebook live or one of the zooms but definitely some of the hot topics i've been putting on on youtube as well lately and if it's a you know common thing that you guys are struggling with definitely i tag that those videos into the club now too so that that way they're all in one library for you guys to boo through and uh so you might see some troubleshooting ones in there so now i think there's like over 70 videos in there now <laughs> but i swear there's like at least almost 50 of them that now that are all projects and have uh pdfs with them of some sort or maybe you don't need a PDF at all and just follow the video. So, yeah, definitely that's my new thing that I want to get you guys all signed up to. And um, a lot of you like to download. You're used to downloading videos from Donna. And um, you got great memory or you are got, you know, Google Drive or some sort of um, external hard drive that you can put all these things on. Uh, definitely, you know, that's the way to do it. But a lot of people that I've experienced with always have a hard time with the um, downloading, keeping those videos, especially if they, they're videos that they want to revisit and come back to. 
right? A lot of times you see a project and then it's gone and then, you know, most of us don't revisit them unless there's something that, you know, we didn't get to. And um, so, yeah, definitely downloadable. I have everything that I have is in the downloadable option. But uh, now I've separated things a little bit for you guys that might not have been on my site for a while. Um, so I have my, all my fun and easy ones have been moved into the club now. And then my project list, because I'm running out of pages on my website, guys. I really am. I got so much there now. So I had to try to think of something, how to utilize it and be good for everybody. So uh, definitely I have the project library now. Some people say it's confusing my site because I have too many libraries or too many options. Um, so that's why I like to remind you guys while I'm here at the meet and greets too. Hopefully you guys will see some of my old ones if you want to remind us about how and where everything is in on my site. Um, again, sometimes I do move things around a little bit. Um, but on the most part, uh, you know, all, there's lots of links to take you to um, some of these places, right? So I'm just going to show you quickly here. Okay, so I have some extra uh, library links here at the top now, but basically they're all in the main uh, online course library is your main link. All right, that has all of them in there. And then if you want a fast link, then the, the practice program is here. And then my main project library, that's more advancing type projects or two-day projects or three-day, five-day ones that I have in here as well. All right, so in the downloadables, you can download all, like everything. You know, it's all here for you guys. I, all the practice program it is a better deal for you if you jump on my site member access and you can download the videos in the um, practice library as well right for all the 14 courses so depending on if you want to download them or if you just want to watch them on my site and then when you get into the paint projects this is all mixed right some of it's in my club some of it's in my advancing library the project library it really just depends on where I put it all but definitely everything that I've done in the last, oh, I don't know, five years or so is here. So just keep loading more. There's definitely more there for you guys to check out to keep you busy, especially January blahs. You guys are bored. Things slow down. Uh, we haven't really had officially winter yet. We still have, uh, it was a really mild, rainy day today. And then I've got some more fun and easy ones here that some of them are on YouTube for you as well. All right, so take a move through there because I know I wanted to remind you about this as well, guys, because I have a little promo for you. All right, I want more people trying my courses and um, trying something a little bit different. So I have another promo code for you guys to check out. All right, and it's a free project, $35 or less in the downloadable library. All right, so if you want to keep them and work on them at your own time, then definitely any of those are definitely available for you in the downloadable. So it's capital F, R, E, E, capital P, project. Okay, any $35 or less, you can pick yourself. And I'm not doing a draw tonight. I decided that everybody's been so awesome. I got all my VIPs here. I've got some new people here with me today just jumping on. And you're like, what's she doing here? I've got a nice promo here for you guys to try one of my projects. Okay, so definitely some of you guys jumped on my free Zoom thing I did with the balls. I'm sorry some of you were a little upset that you didn't get the replay of it. Here's your opportunity all right so definitely if that's the one you want it's in the downloadable now and it's like a two-day class it's usually $45 for two days and this is Canadian guys I am a Canadian site and it is a little bit cheaper for you guys in different parts of the world to jump on so your card will I'll figure it all out when you get in there and um, but you'll just see the Canadian price listed in there and then you put this in the cart and you'll get one one-time use Okay, for this promo code for $35 downloadable 
course and you get to have a freebie for me okay so as long as this video is around and people are watching it um definitely i sometimes would put my little promos on youtube too so i want to merry christmas to everybody and um definitely though i'm still kind of in the festive mood here a little bit and i wanted to try to give you guys a little something and usually i do a raffle and only pick one person so tonight i thought what the heck i'm gonna give it away and i'll show you guys that again hopefully you got a pencil uh and a paper and you wrote that down it was free project capital f capital p in the cart all right so pick any one project and more if you like <laughs> that would be wonderful and then um definitely i've always got like package deals all right so if you guys want to jump on my programs there i got my Technically, it's 15 courses now because I separated one and I made like a, a an intro and then it jumps into the one stroke leaf for course number one now. And um, so that's the only little difference I did there. It's all the same stuff. You don't have to resave anything if you guys already have it. It's just separated a little bit more uh, because I really wanted you guys to to practice one stroke at a time and somehow I got two in course number two <laughs> so definitely I separated that a little bit um, so you guys can feel like it's a little smaller for you and you can tackle it a little bit easier doing one at a time and then if you guys haven't jumped on it yet definitely it's you know usually they're like $25 each and this is like a package deal so you can jump on the first six or you can jump on the whole 14 and if you jump on the whole 14 I actually have an extra bonus that's going to open for you too this is all site member access under the one stroke practice library and then the boot camp too that we did to advance all those strokes all those tulips and pansies and poppies and roses and leaves we added more fall leaf selection in this one and um, really jumped up those type of flowers first I show you the measy and then we get into the advanced boot camp too so that's all included in that package deal guys if you want to jump on the whole 14 courses it also includes uh, a new group too that we did uh, it's been about a year now since we have the Facebook group for just our VIP so I go in there and give you guys extra little lowdowns on things and um, bonuses whenever I can and then um, you also get a free zooms with me throughout the program if we need it and unlimited facebook messaging with with the program as well so you can always send me your practice and i can always help you out and let you know how you're doing and stuff like that if you're ready for certs definitely i've got a promo going on today 30 percent off only till friday if you guys want to jump on your certs and you're ready for level one level two there is a, a special package deal if you want to do skill builders with it and you're kind of still need a little bit more practice to get into it then definitely skill builders level one combination is available and then level two if you're ready for it a lot of people have done one and ready for two and then a few people are even ready for a new level three right so this is all done with a new pace now it's changed through the years a little bit level three and used to be like an oil kind of um, product that we used before so the paste definitely makes the multi-surface paint feel like oil painting so definitely a different style wet on wet a lot of fun really push yourself again in a different level and then i found myself really loosening up a lot more and then when i get back into the traditional one stroke i just felt like you know again every cert really helped me like and um bump up my, my work you know made me feel a little bit more confident about everything so definitely every cert is going to help you do that and then if you're ready for really big brushes then definitely i can offer you the oversized as well now so yeah hopefully you guys will join me for some more advanced stuff you know or more you know one-on-one -on -one kind of training mentorship with my program or with donna's certs definitely all those things are available and um you just have to contact me right you've got my email from when you signed up here tonight and just reply to that and ask me any questions you, you might have had there from tonight that you want to know more information about all right so definitely i always want to do that 
Um, so how do we download it on our device? Well, depending on what device you're talking about, um, definitely when you're doing iPads and phones, it's really hard to download things. Uh, you have to have like a desktop or some sort of external box that you can plug into your laptop that you can save it to, right? So you might be able to temporarily save it onto your laptop, but you'll have to move it because it'll probably take up all your memory, right? If you have pictures on there and stuff like that, laptops definitely don't have a lot of memory. So that's why, again, people love my site member access, guys. Definitely, it is a way to go. Um, but, you know, I do have options for everybody. You know, everybody has... Uh, if you know me at all, I'm all about options. I can't do things one way. I have to do things like five different ways. Because there always is. You know, there, there's always different ways of doing things. And one way will always work for somebody and maybe not for somebody else. So... Uh, the rosebud that give you grief. Yeah, well, hopefully with the Christmas balls, too. I gave you guys a lot more practice again with the Christmas ball projects. Definitely my program, guys. I'll show you down here a little bit more. I pulled out a few sheets um, from, you know, my program that I've recreated myself, right? But I've done it in a way where it's all baby stepped, right? So for me, it's working with those basic strokes and then slowly progressing into a little bit harder and harder and every stroke evolves into something else, right? So definitely, uh, I got a, an email today asking if I would show pan, uh, a demo on a pansy tonight, but I don't think I see Holly here tonight. Do I see her? I don't think she made it. Is Holly here? Is that you under the sand sun? Um, but yeah, she was asking me, I guess she was having problems with some pansies. And um, I'm going to remind you guys, I do have a full course just on the pansy. With some butterflies there. And again, really pushing yourself on that daisy stroke. There's just so many different assignments just on the daisy stroke. So that way you're focusing on that daisy stroke and then doing a bunch of different ways and things with it. So then that way it really pushes your memory to get that stroke perfected. And then again, when you get into the shell strokes, you know, there's a variety of different ways of really bumping that shell stroke a little bit differently. And then I gave you guys an assignment to play around with different colors and, and and play with like 11 different centers in there just to kind of open up your mind of you know that five petal shell stroke or teardrop flower can look like any flower it could look like poppies you know just by playing around with all your little centers differently right and then my liner one is <laughs> my fun thing i got you guys to do with the push flower with my liner practice again pushing you guys right out of your cover zone doing wacky things with that brush you never imagined and really loosening up like i said that liner practice is definitely one of my favorite courses and then of course are you know basic teardrops and one stroke leaves and sunflowers and all that is in, in the whole package guys so again if it's been a while since you've seen it and been a while since you've been able to play definitely we need to warm up and play and practice again and it's always good to do that on paper before we go and grab those balls and start working on something whether it be a candle, whether it be uh, a glass vase, whether it be whatever you want to do, right? So I've given you lots and lots of different uh, ideas in my painting hack, guys. Those are free videos for you guys to check out on what should I practice on and why, right? So slippery surfaces, dry surfaces, stuff like that. I've given you a bunch of different ideas. Go check out my painting hacks. And uh, if you haven't seen them yet, and, um, so yeah, definitely, if you have any questions, you can pop them down in the, in the chat here if you want, or just unmute yourself, you know, try to be a little bit informal. Uh, some of us already all know each other, but there's definitely there a couple of new people, Myra, I think we've met before, it's been around, been a while since I've seen you, hello, hello, and Benny, and who's the Samsung nerds blacked out, I don't know who that is, pop a chat in there and say hello. Stona Jensen and Cecile and Miss Sue. Some of my VIPs have been around with me from almost the beginning. And Betty's got the paint out. Oh my gosh, she's doing some shell strokes already. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, you've been doing great, Penny. Just doing great. Yeah, and the paper definitely has its own challenges too right and so definitely as soon as you can if you haven't done a, pro a project yet you haven't got a canvas out 
please try it i'm telling you you'll see the difference and all the little ways that you can i call it cheating you know erase and stuff like that <laughs> what you don't like i i have i have done a couple and canvases and it was really way easier <laughs> for sure and then that way you know you got that in your mind at least so when you're playing on the paper just know that it's just playing and practicing trying something different seeing a different color combination you know trying to see if you can wiggle your brush differently right pushing yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit differently you know and warming up right and then if it is something slippery that you're practicing on warm up on something slippery so that's the biggest thing that i always um say so yeah, definitely how big is it that you want to make things, that makes a big difference. Everybody has a comfortable brush size. I definitely did a video on that too. Hopefully you guys seen that in my YouTube channel as well as, you know, play with all your brush strokes, all your brush sizes. One of them will be your perfect one that you just seem to be able to manipulate and then stick with that brush size until you really master the stroke and or the flower that you're trying to do. And then when you got it mastered, then start playing and pushing yourself with different size brushes is something that I always try to encourage all right so yeah we definitely have been doing a lot of holly leaves and a lot of poinsettias and um, definitely it's nice to be able to get out of that season a little bit and we'll play around with a little quick pansy for you too and uh, what Holly was asking was a, a fancy pansy um to show us and i did do a course on that guys um i did have my practice course with the pansy and then i did make a full course uh project that's available let's see if i can find it for you oh that's the christmas balls that we just did and this is my flower uh pattern that goes around like in a circle and um there's a lot of variety of different pansies in there and definitely there's a couple of really fancy ones where I was really rocking those petals back and forth and you definitely got to be comfortable with that brush and dancing with it and jumping back up on that chisel and flipping flopping the other way right so um Hopefully you guys have got a chance to work yourself through my whole program. Like I said, by the time you get into the advancing leaves and the poppies, you're starting to get into those advanced rolled strokes that, um, that I'm talking about. Right. So if you haven't seen them before, I'll give you guys a quick little demo here on that. Alright, so when working on paper, definitely there's a good chance that I might sneak in a little bit of floating medium, but I always say, if you guys haven't heard it before, definitely I call it an as-needed kind of product, because I always like to feel out my surface, feel out the paint, see how thick my paint is. Sometimes I have old paint, and it doesn't flatten out like that when you bang it on the table, then you know that your paint might be a little bit too thick. All right, so stuff like that, temperature of your room, how long your paint has been on your plate, all those things make different variations of what's going to happen when you're working, right? Your brush is starting to get dry and goopy. you got to try to, you know, moisten it again, clean out, you know, you've been doing a lot, a lot of painting, you know, then definitely you have to refocus things again a little bit sometimes. So that's why I always try to just put out a tiny little bit of paint as I need it, and then even if I'm doing a big project I definitely would rather keep adding fresh paint a little at a time so then that way I can keep that focused and then I'm not messing around with this floating medium as much All right so a lot of people put way too much paint on their plates at one time All right so definitely I want to do a little bit of a coral I love this engine red and moon yellow it's a really brilliant corally kind of color for any color and then always adding just that little bit of white just a little bit and then i still like to keep that yellow yellow enough so then when i want that third color right so by itself you can see that that's still a little bit dry but it's on paper guys so what the biggest trick i can share with you is just slow down on this paper and really allow that paint to suck up 
right? And then, like I said, I want to keep that a little bit still strong yellow so that when I want to have that extra little highlight in there, I can do that and add that little extra white. All right, so looking at my gradient, I can see that I really don't have enough red in my brush. I kept adding yellow and not enough red. All right, so definitely got to add both colors a little bit at a time. Right, push down that gradient down a little bit, right, so you can see a little bit more yellow. Right, so if you're not getting the results that you're looking for, definitely gotta, you know, see what you can do to change things. Right, it's always something they gotta work at, and it's not always gonna be perfect the first time. Right, the more you play, the more it definitely will come right you'll start to recognize the issue that you're having and you'll be able to correct it a lot faster so definitely when you play with um pansies you know it's it's having that back pedal a little bit different right bouncing down down up down down up down down up and definitely put a nice pedal that's you know, we want to be a little bit more fancy. And definitely traditionally, it's all just very simple, easy wiggles all the way around, right? So just, oops, playing around with different variations of your wiggle, right? So sometimes you are doing up, down, down, up, down, down, up, right? It gets a little bit more fancy. Especially when you're doing it with the reverse with the dark on the edge. You want to have maybe a little bit more light than you do dark. Okay, so it has that little bit of light. So we want to have that same kind of gradient when we're flipping our brush up too. Okay, so we're going to push on that brush a little bit more. Get that more yellow in there. And then when you're doing the down, down, up. This is where you're starting to do your backflip, right? You'll have more room when you have when you do that down, down, up. You're gonna go back, and you have lots of room, right? So you don't have to be so so dramatic, but definitely having that little bit bigger scoop. Get up on that chisel and push back. Right, so basically it's that little dolphin nose that we're putting in there. Right, so sometimes we have that with our pansies too. Especially when we want to do a little bit more of a, a fancier petal. Right, so definitely you have to have a little bit more of a uh, pivot point. So you're doing more like a teardrop shape as opposed to a U shape, right? Sometimes we can do a little bit more fanned out. Bring it right out, right out to the side and then in. So you're going a little bit more like a V instead of like a straight to straight, right? So it's all different variations, right? And having a little bit more of a V, an open V. See the shape that we're going on here? Okay, so see how it's slowly small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then slowly starting getting smaller, right? So a lot of the biggest thing with the shell stroke that I see all the time is people are doing it a little bit too straight or they're doing it all the same size right they're not giving it a nice round shell stroke it's too flat so we got to come up on that all right i'm still trying to fight with my paint I'm not adding any medium so smaller bigger bigger and then you can stay consistent for a few then you're coming back down, 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 right? So you got that nice shell movement, 
right so this is the biggest part of the pansy that a lot of people have a problem with is that first petal at the very back okay. does that make sense with you guys there with your shell strokes all right so again a little bit more pivot but I'm coming smaller, bigger, bigger, higher, smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, so you should have that height up there. Okay. And then it doesn't matter what color you do your pansies, but a lot of times we like to, to do them to give it lots of contrast, is getting that reverse the colors, right? So where do you put that next stroke? Right? So a lot of times your people are too far away or they're too far up, right? So you can definitely start just along the inside of this one. They should overlap just slightly, right? Because then if you go to too high, you're cutting off that look and you're not getting that small, medium, medium, you know, you don't want to hide all your nice, beautiful stroke you did up there, right? So again, with a pivot point, one a little bit bigger a little bit bigger but these side ones definitely you have to be a lot bigger and wider for your stroke okay so if you want to do two if you want to like a lot of times you can do two strokes on the side depends on how frilly you want to do that right so you can make one and then you can add a second side Right? You're going to add a little bit more white. So basically, you've got to make this one shell stroke, you know, almost the same width as if you were going to do two. Much wider than... Right? So again, you can cut this a little bit smaller. Put a little bit more white in it. Oops. A little bit messy there. Back, refocus my paint. All right, so then I've got a nice wide side to it. I'm gonna go over that again, just a little bit more white, and pull in. All right, so over again, pivot point. I don't want this to be too yet too white. I want the back one to be a little darker. And then pull in. Alright, so it's just like a wiggly teardrop. And then you're going to tip with a little bit more white. And then add a second one. And you see how much nicer that one would turned out. One always turns out better than the other, guys. Definitely being right-handed and left-handed may make a bit difference. Right, one side will be a little bit easier to do than the other. Okay, and then what you can do is flip your brush around again. The same color combinations. Okay, and then we can add a simple teardrop and another little teardrop. So it should be really round, not too wide, not too tall. It, pansies are a very round flower, right? And then you can add a little darker dot if you want, something that's like a sap green or something like that. And then definitely that's your basic pansy. How are you doing there, Penny? Play in there. Get you do the teardrop. Make it a little bit bigger, lower. Yeah, a little bit bigger and lower. Just a little bit bigger with that teardrop. Okay, so make it nice and round. And then, if you want to add just a little bit more of a bump, right? You can. Go and add these little dolphin noses right at the very top. 
show you again a little bit closer. Okay, just adding just that little bit of white. Get right up on that chisel, right along the line that you started with. Pull just very gently and then press and then pull right up to that point. Okay. So once you've got happiness with your basic tear, uh, pansy, right? Then definitely, you know, you can play around. You might need just a little bit of movement more with your corner of your brush that's doing more work right so when you're doing these rocking and rolling strokes the top of that red is doing more work than anything else right you got a pivot point that yellow hardly is doing anything but it's got to be in there right so again i gotta change my colors i like to flip my brush around Put a little bit of pressure on that back. I gotta shove that red back up to a three-quarter fade. All right, the more you play, the more you feel more comfortable. And again, I like separating these side ones. All right, into a little bit smaller ones. All right, you can overlap. And I like to push you guys to really force yourself to paint and without flipping your, your page around. Right? Learn how to get oh, a little bit darker yellow here. Right? Learn how to dance with that brush and curl it in in all the different directions. Right? It'll have more you'll see it, it'll be just a little bit more dance in your stroke too. Right? Pretend it's a wall. And you can't move it. Okay. You can move your plate though. <laughs> I love spinning my plate around. Keeps me focused. I just, I keep, ended up going upside down. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm a little bit flat here. So I got to bring that teardrop down just a little bit lower. All right, so little bit lower and a little bit lower okay again advancing yourself slowly is what ideally is what you should do right you start with the basic ones and then as you keep playing with all the different flowers then you'll definitely start to start dancing with your brush You'll be able to even rock and roll your little I call them dolphin noses. Okay. And then of course if you want to go over anything I always like cheating. Right, you can always go and grab a little smaller brush, and this is when I love floating medium. If there's anything that I didn't like, then I can come and make just a little, little tiny soft gradient, and I can't see it white on white there. Right, I know I'm moving, I'm cheating now. Right, so I want to add just a little bit more highlight, then I can always just go and sneak that in. Right, I liked it on the other side. I wanted to add a little bit more on the other side. <laughs> All right, and then again, I don't have any other colors on my plate right now, so. All right, always add your little center in there. Definitely looks better when you put something a little darker in there. guys quick little pansy for you 
Alright, so definitely working your way, practicing the individual strokes, right? And understanding the size proportions is definitely a big thing about the pansy. Alright, so I have a whole whack of sheets for you guys if you know you jump on that practice one. Right, we play around and I do all of these in the course, practice course. Or is and then I've got sheets somewhere. Oh yeah, on the back, right? Again, all the different strokes all the way around. It's all broken down on sheets for you that you guys can print out. Right? And then or oh, even the back of a pansy, right? Try to do some some other little bud ones and the actual pansy leaf, right? It's a little bit different style. And um so yeah, a lot of people were I'm using just a very cheap, cheap cardstock. It's not like printer paper. It's not that thin. It's still like a cardstock, but it's definitely the cheapest you can get. I get a big package of it, as cheap as I can get on on Amazon. And um, company, but I was getting it done. Oh, let's see. I can barely get Spring Hill. All right, Spring Hill Digital National Paper, gray. Definitely gray is what you need for practicing, because then you can see where you put white. Because a lot of people like to do something with white, and then you're on white paper and you can't see it. So gray is basically a very neutral color that will pop up any color. So you can practice all of your dark strokes on the edges, the light strokes, any strokes, and any color combinations, you'll be great on a gray paper, right? A lot of people like to go on that black paper right away, and definitely it has its own set of challenges. And you definitely won't see the true results of your stroke work if you start practicing on black. And then white is definitely going to make your challenges too when you want to see those little white edges pop out. You know, definitely you won't see it on white paper. So if you haven't got any gray, then um, definitely I suggest the weight. It's like I said, it's really cheap. It's not that thick. I actually have a card stock that I've bought to make cards with that is much thicker and heavier. Um, the numbers are really don't know, but you'll know by the uh, how cheap it is by how many pa pages you get in the back, uh, because some are so expensive. You get maybe like 50 pages in a pack, and and they're still paying good money for it. So yeah, definitely. Um, uh, that's where I got the best, best value. There's a couple paper pads out there. Um, oops. This is just uh, scrapbooking paper. Again, it's just like the thinness of photocopy paper. But again, you do get some nice colors and designs and weird backgrounds that you can play with. I found this pack here actually at work. <laughs> Somebody got rid of it. So when I've seen all the different type of animal prints and stuff like that, well, that would be fun to play on. <laughs> right? So yeah, definitely you can consider that too. But just know that if you make uh, any of these papers too wet, if you play with too much medium or water, that's when it really starts to buckle. Right, so try to stay away from too wet, and then hopefully your paper will stay, you know, fairly smooth for you. Won't buckle on you. You like that, guys? So yeah, definitely. I try to make it a little bit informal. I'll try to you know give you guys the opportunity to pick my brain. Some of you guys are my VIPs, and they use this opportunity to help troubleshoot anything that they're having a hard time with my program. So I'm always happy to show you guys again and um, give you guys a little bit more food for thought. All right, how to build yourselves up with the stroke work, and then definitely you can. Do a really nice design with a pansy here. Right, make sure your water, when you clean your brushes, make sure you're really drying that brush. I have to say that a lot because uh, a lot of people don't realize that how wet their brush is and waterlogged it is. And then they're not getting good results with the paint as well. Right, so... 
I'd rather add media, medium oops, to my paint if I need a little bit more runny, right? I want that paint to be as nice and strong as possible. My sap is a tiny bit thick. So again, just a lot of wiggles and a rounder petal. All right, so when your brush really needs to do a lot of work and come back all the way around, that's when I'm going to go for the medium more. Right, when you're doing small little strokes, then that's when, like daisy strokes, that's when you're definitely you don't need as much medium. Okay. All the way around, definitely rounder at the top. All right, run out of paint, just go grab some more. Finish that stroke, work your way down. If I have to go over things, especially on paper, you just know that you got to go over it again. All right? Add a little leaf. Let's go pick an empty bottle to work with tonight. <laughs> I have so many I want to finish up before I open new ones. Alright, so a lot of people are having a hard time with that reversed color gradient. It's dark on the outside. Alright, so the last flower series I did on my practice library is all about reversed painting. All right, so having that little bit of gradient. Ah, uh, let's do which one did I do? Little and big. All right, so just a little bit of a teardrop with a bump. All right, and then I did just a teardrop at the bottom. Right. You can make this a little bit more peaky if you want. Right. Give yourself a quick butterfly. And then I go grab some water because with your liner brushes, you only paint that I need water with. I don't use medium. I right, just add just a little bit because we want coverage, but we want it to move, so I always test it. All right? See how thin, how much can you tickle your surface to make that really super thin? All right? You can always push on it to make it fat, but definitely just very, very little, little paint. All right? Load up my whole brush with paint, but then just to give it movement. And then you can always give yourself a little bit more lined look. Oops. I was going to wiggle and then I stopped my wiggle halfway. <laughs> right. And then your push. And then pull through with a nice a tail. Right. So add a little bit of blue and green together. And then we'll pop up some stamens. I can't wait for spring, right? I had enough with this yucky winter already. Right? Then I'm going to go just below it and then cross right over and come right back to the same little point. That gives it a little bit more interesting look. <laughs> Alright, so you can make some fun little designs. This would be fun on a Christmas ball, too. You can hang these balls up all through the year, too, if you make them a little bit more floral and decorative, and you're just using the ball as a decorative piece in your home. doesn't have to signify only Christmas. But um, some people like to decorate them all year round. 
keep some as an ornament. All right, so I have a whole course, guys, on wildflowers and bugs. All right, my course number six is all definitely full of different wildflower ideas. There's the practice of each, and then there's also a project that I did. So it's like three in one course, all in course number six. So there's lots and lots and lots to play for, play with. So by the time you finish the first five courses, definitely you'll be jumping on playing a lot more after that, doing a lot more assignments like this and um, all the basic flowers all right so definitely you guys know that you can send me pictures on Facebook too so I can see a little bit closer if you have any questions of your practice send them to me on Facebook so I can see and um, I'll pop them down here all right. All right. And don't forget to visit my site, mandyscreativetouch.com. There's no hyphen in Mandy's because it's a website. So just Mandy's with an S, creativetouch.com. Most of you guys see links all over my Facebook page. Jump on it. Check out my downloadables. Put this in the code and get yourself a $35 or less project for free. All right. So, hopefully you guys like that, and I can't wait to see what you pick. Please also join our community Facebook group, right? I've got two groups. The one group that is community for everybody definitely is linked off my page. If you haven't joined us in our other community group, definitely that's where you guys can share all of your work that you've done and uh, different projects that you've done. I and um, your aha moments maybe you want to share that you've had from some of my courses would be lovely to see so yeah hopefully you guys like my little uh demo on the pansy here you'll jump on my full program it'll definitely give you more breakdown a little slower and um all the parts and sheets there to go with it if you need more help on that pansy Hello. yes cecilia that's the shit subject. Um, you know, guys keep bringing up new uh, brushes, and one of them is the, is it the mock brush or something? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe sometime, you know, you can give us a demo, like, how, how do you use that? Oh, good question. Yeah, um, actually, I ordered a couple, and I next hopefully by the next meet and greet, definitely I'll have them. I, they should be coming in soon um, to play with a little bit more. She's got a bunch of new little brushes, like the small little feather brushes, too. Did you guys see those ones? Those are pretty cool. I've got it here somewhere. Got too many. New stencil brushes, yeah. But I tried using them and I kept getting paint underneath the stencil, so I don't know if I was using it right or not. Okay, you know I love the science of things, Sue. That's an awesome question. <laughs> yeah, I was going up and down, and then I tried to go swirling with it. Yeah. And yeah, I, know, I always say go up and down. down. No swirling, up and down only. And you could even use our scruffy brushes. And what also we have in the glass brushes are another scruffy brush. Right? This is a scruffy brush that you get in the glass set that I was showing you guys. See, I still have that. And so if you do need to go and, and work on glass items, I do suggest to use these brushes. It has its own little scruffy brush in there. Two of them, small and large. And then ours is a lot more coarse, like in the value set. And then if you see, even in her pro set, that scruffy brush is a little bit softer again. All right? Mm -hmm. So remember our surfaces, guys. Right? Sometimes we need a little stiffer brush. Right? And then I got this set from her, too, later, not too long ago. And she was saying it was a wonderful set, too. It's definitely really coarse. You know where I love this brush? On that Santa sweater I just did for my mom. Because I used, I did the snowflakes and the ho-ho and the stencil. And this brush was perfect on fabric. So this is the thing that sometimes there's always, this is a great brush, but <laughs> you may not want it on every surface. I think this brush too would be more scratchy on glass or plastic. 
right? So we would need something a little bit softer to pounce in those stencils. Yeah, I tried the coarser brush for stenciling. What were you working on? I guess canvas is like a happy medium. It's not no, like fabric. About two weeks ago, I can't even think. What were um, you doing it on? On the canvas, probably? No, it was on... What was it on? It must have been on note cards. Paper. Paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. So definitely, I always used to use my scratchy brush a lot, right? Make mm -hmm. sure that you're unloading that paint in a, um, a towel so that you yeah. get most of it off. Yeah, I and think then it to go up and down, and I think I was going in swirls. Straight up and down has always been my best. Uh, it doesn't yeah. matter which kind of brush, but I do find that is a bit of a difference with all these different scruffy brushes. And believe me, I've gotten a bunch of them with her through the years, too. She had that pink set for a while, too. And again, if you compare the brush brushes between these two sets this is still so coarse and this has a little bit of softness to it and then i've gotten some maybe from other brands uh again the pink set was used to be my it's very similar to this this one but again the, they're very coarse right and then this was another set too not from donna but this is super super soft this is a little bit more for dry brushing. Um, but yeah, definitely there's, she's got a, had a few, and then I guess depending on the manufacturer, uh, she's had two, uh, they come in all like two sizes or three sizes, small, medium, and large. This These are a lot smaller, uh, rounder around the edge. Right, but this one's definitely a little bit more flatter. Right, so when you go to pounce, you're getting a bigger surface. When it's too round of a brush, you you mostly get just the top, and then you got to push harder to get the bigger part of your brush utilized. Right, so definitely, I think a flatter pouncer sometimes I get a little bit better results because it, like I said, I just I love our scruffy brushes a lot of times, and that's what I used to always use as well and it's definitely a lot softer and if you're doing a some sort of stencil I guess on a plastic charger or something like that then I definitely would I would use the soft scruffy brush for that stencil too great question because it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately too is all these different um, brushes for pouncing that we have for options and well i love options but then I'm, i've got to dig down to the science now like okay why is this one working and this one not and what's so different about these brushes <laughs> that she's coming up with so yeah and unless i get a brush then i can't compare it and share it with you guys what my opinion is of it right and um so yeah that's definitely i would just um be really quick try a little spot and if it doesn't work good for you you know then try a different brush practice a little bit on something with different brushes to see your favorite brush uh, but again I definitely will notice a big difference on that sweater I did to something that's really slippery even canvas and they definitely have a, a class to don't you uh, use a stencil yeah, definitely. There, it's all linked into uh, or one of the hot topics that I did. Uh, you are my sunshine with the sunflower. I think I did playing around with stencils there. So yeah, definitely that's available. But the the is the one where they really did that couch. <laughs> I think it's the background or something. We did. Like, did we get stencil on that one? No, no, that's <laughs> the, the couch inspiration. No. <laughs> Yeah. I don't remember which one we did where we had to use the, the stencil. But I know you do have some classes, so Oh definitely you'll be able okay. to, you'll you'll be able to see um some of them I did on a gift bag. Uh, I'm quickly looking through my list here. Yeah, there's a bunch of them there. You'll you'll see when you're going to look for your free downloadable. And then some I did freehand handwriting 
or with a template that I made for you guys. Yeah, it was that, I think it was that, um, You Are My Sunshine that I was playing around with stencils that is on YouTube for you. So, yeah, thanks so much guys for a quick visit. I know that you guys probably still got lots on the go this week there with New Year's coming up. Share with me guys on my Facebook group. Uh, you know, anything that you feel like you want to tackle in 2024 this year, you know, what's your biggest thing that you want to accomplish uh, with one stroke? I'd love to help you. I'm happy to be there to help you guys along your journey. And big, 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 big hugs. And uh, accept this little thank you. Okay, that I, oops, upside down for you. Free project, $35 or less, downloadable. Okay, so if you guys are checking this out on YouTube, so look down in the link below and to the description area, and you'll see the link to my site. I said thank you, and that's very generous of you. Oh, you're welcome, guys. I hope you're going to share these projects with me, and let me see how you're doing with them. And uh, that's all I, I would be happy with. And share. I have, I have about five of them that I need to <laughs> that I need to do now. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, January is a great time to do that. And uh, find some time there to get some creation going on. All right, guys. So we'll see you last Tuesday of the month, every month, here on Zoom. So we'll see you in January, if not before. Thank you, Mandy. Oh, you're welcome, Donna. Sue, Cecilia. Thank you. Happy I am so, so happy to have you guys all here tonight. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Happy New Year, too. Bye. You too, bye-bye.